presented here may be theoretical and have little or no scientific substantiation. Users are advised to conduct their own diligence. Welcome to Ask the Experts, where you'll learn about a variety of life-enhancing subjects. Today, we delve into holistic healing and whole food nutrition with the Natural Health Authority, Jason Eagle of Strategic Healing. And now here's Jason. All right, everybody. Hey, this is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. Uh, the number to call in is 313-272-5600. You can also see me live on my Facebook Live, which is Strategic Healing. And later, then I, I record it and put it on my YouTube channel, which is Jason Eagle QRA. And so you can always refer back to, what did he say? What was that? And So let's get into it. We got some questions. These are questions on health and answers on health. And living and all these different types of things. So <clears throat> there's been a lot of attention this week. Um, I don't watch the news, but everyone that comes in and tells me about this virus, this virus that people are afraid of. And in, in general, what do you do about viruses and how do I take care of it? And how do I protect myself and all these other things? Well, I'll tell you one thing uh, in particular, this virus uh, that everyone's afraid about uh, has been shown that Purell actually will kill it. Um, so making sure that we've got that Purell, those little hand sanitizer wipes or that hand sanitizer stuff, wiping your hands so that you're, you're, when you're out in public and things like that, or when the kids come from school, something like that. Now, one of the, pro one of the problems with, let's say, Purell or these other things is they kill your own immune system. So they kill everything. They, they wipe everything out. But we have uh, some real danger of that, of overusing it. It's been shown that we overuse antibiotics, and that is an antibiotic. When we overuse antibiotics, it can mess up our immune system, and it can weaken our immune system, and it can, in fact, create superbugs. So that being said, what you want to do is you want to nip it in the bud. You really want to get your system strong enough so that if you do come in contact, when you do come in contact, there's nothing. Your body has already d determined exactly what to do about it. And, and so this is building our immune system. So I'm going to go on a couple different things, which is number one, how do I build my immune system? If I'm healthy and I don't have it, uh, I want to make sure I don't have it. And the number two, which is it just started. I feel like I'm getting it. The onset of a cold or a flu. What do you do with that? So very, very part. And if you act quickly, you can really stop it quickly, nip it in the bud and get it to, to basically get your body to figure out what to do about this. So the, the very first thing is how do we protect ourselves from viruses? Now, antibiotics, which is, you know, you've got uh, people get sick from a cold, typically a cold, and a cold can be the rhinovirus and stuff like that. But uh, there's, if we get sick from something, it's bacterial or it's viral. Now, bacterial, there's a lot of antibiotics that we can take, whereas viral, there are not very many antiviral drugs, and the antiviral drugs don't, drugs don't work very well, and they are immunosuppressive. Meaning what really, so basically when the doctor or the, the nurse or says, you know, what do you do about this virus? Go home and rest because your body will strengthen itself because you got to fight it. You have to, and it's not fighting it per se, is it's kind of like the Borg. You have to figure out how to be ahead of it, how to adapt to it because they are adapting to these living life forms that are very, very smart and they do what's called quorum sensing, which is they communicate with each other and they communicate with other species. They communicate with um, viruses, communicate with other viruses, viruses communicate with bacteria and viruses also communicate with uh, parasites, which is larger living life forms, kind of the elephant or the whales of the the you know, small things living inside our body. And they all kind of communicate together in terms of how to attack you, how to survive, how to thrive within your system. And so what we're trying to do is, is we're trying to, to be the master of this. We're trying to get ahead of this. And um, because our body can also send out signals to turn them and get them to become neutered or get them to become what's called dormant because we can have things that are inside, but they're just kind of sleeping inside of us and they never wake up. So one of the number one things that we know about viruses, herpes virus, um, 
any of uh, the, the Coxsackie virus, which is the hand, foot, and mouth disease, this one that's out there. So one of the things is our body uses different enzymes to not only break our foods down, but enzymes in order to just run our systems. Now an enzyme can break actually, so protease is an enzyme and it breaks down protein. And protein is what these bodies are made out of. They have skin and you know muscle and, per se, like we do. And so the protease, our body secretes all these, but there's one in particular called um, uh, an amino acid. So there's amino acids that we get from proteins. These are, our amino acids are neurotransmitters. They are, when we eat protein, it's, what do we get out of protein? It's building blocks. So we get minerals, we get nutrition from minerals, which is energy. We get uh, uh, carbohydrates, which is, that's going to be quick energy as well too. Now protein also releases energy. Fat is also releasing energy. But protein is really primarily the reason we eat because we need more building blocks. You know, you need more bricks delivered to the work site. Okay. So part of the building blocks of our own cells are amino acids. It's what the DNA is made out of. And there's one super important, and there's two amino acids that are on the two sides of the teeter-totter in terms of one really feeds uh, viruses and one neuters and stops viruses. Lysine is something that stops viruses. It kills viruses, but it also puts them into a uh, slumber mode. Now, then the other one that actually stimulates uh, the growth of viruses and the help of viruses for them to communicate is what's called arginine. So when a person really wants to go after viruses, if they have a virus or like they have, for instance, shingles or something like that, you go on what's called the antiviral diet. And this is a good preparation for a person. If you travel a lot and you are worried, like people are going to fly to China or be, be you know, uh, or India or anywhere. It's not just China. This is, this is kind of all over. Okay. So we go on to what's called antiviral diet. <clears throat> the antiviral diet is high lysine, low arginine. And there are foods. So first of all, we look at there are foods to avoid. Now the foods that are, are the ones to avoid are the ones that have the worst ratio of what's called arginine to lysine. We want the best ratio of lysine to arginine. Okay, so the foods to avoid that have the most arginine to lysine ratio are almonds. So again, a lot of people go, I want to eat healthy. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get strong. I'm going to build up my immune system. But if you are eating foods on this list to boost up your immune system, you're actually feeding the virus. And so we want to do the opposite. So the foods to avoid would be almonds. They are a ratio of four to one, one of the worst. Uh, brown rice. Brown rice is healthy, but not in this, not because it's got too much arginine. Chocolate. Chocolate is a ratio of two to one. Sunflower seeds. Infant cereals. So how do you protect your, your children? You know, the infant cereals. There's other baby food that they can eat other than the baby cereals. Whole wheat bread. Peanuts and peanut butter. That's a ratio to three to one. Pecans. Oatmeal. Soybeans. Corn. Millet. Onions. Onions are good, but no, they are high on this arginine to lysine. Brussels sprouts, sesame seeds, they're also a three to one ratio. Split peas, walnuts, wheat germ, and caffeine. These are all the foods that you want to avoid if you have a virus or if you are, are want to prepare your system so that you don't get virus and you prepare your system to be, to be strong against it. Now then we got good foods to encourage, which are high lysine, low arginine. Brewer's yeast, that's a ratio of two to one. Very good lysine to arginine. Milk products, if you can tolerate milk products, if you are lactose intolerant and you really can't, um, but milk products are really, so that would be cheeses. If you tend towards, say, uh, lactose intolerance, you can try what's called, you can get the lactose-free milk. You can try that. You can also try hard cheeses. So Parmesan, Parmesan Reggiano, um, the aged cheeses. Those ones, the lactose by the, the 
fermentation process or the, the breakdown process of aging of the cheese gets converted to galactose, which is good. And you'll find many people that say have a lactose intolerance, they do the hard cheeses, they're pretty, they're fine. Uh, most cheeses and yogurts, okay? Also, what's really good for uh, high lysine, low arginine is the meats, beef and pork, poultry and turkey and chicken and spinach, seafoods as sardines and shrimp and fish. These things are all great, super high on the highest on the lysine to arginine. Actually, the, the like I said, um, the milk products are the best. Uh, fair foods are eggs, they're fair game, and these are equal amounts to lysine and arginine, which is most vegetables, potatoes included. Um, so eat your vegetables too, but you really want to encourage more of these ones to more of the, the, the meat and the milk and that type of stuff. Free foods, which has no arginine whatsoever, you, you eat your heart's content, is lettuce and citrus fruits. So in ten, we tend to say don't give too much sugar, and citrus fruits has a lot of sugar, but if a light antiviral diet, high lysine, the citrus fruits are actually good. Low sugar citrus fruits would be lemon and lime. A great strategy is to wake up in the morning and, and get some hot water and squeeze a whole lemon or a whole lime in there, okay, and drink that down, or pour in some apple cider vinegar, maybe about two teaspoons worth, of, it's a great morning tonic. That helps to sanitize the gut. I'll get into that one later. For That's really helpful for kids that have autism. I'll talk to that about later. Then we can also take lysine. You can go to the health food store. You can go to um, Whole Foods and you can get a lysine tablets. And it's between 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams. So basically three pills. But you take them on an empty stomach. You do not take them with food. You can take them all in the morning or you can spread it out through, you know, one, one, and one, but they have to be three hours uh, before, three hours after a meal and 20 minutes before the next meal. So that's why waking up in the morning, really it's easy, just take all three in the morning on an empty stomach. Because if you take lysine uh, with uh, other foods, uh, with protein in particular, it will compete with that and it will not be digested and will not be absorbed correctly to go after the viruses. So antiviral diet is a great way to treat it and pre-treat it and also on the onset. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. If you have any questions, you can call into the show. It's 313-272-5600. And I'm going to keep going on, which is now we get into the onset of a cold or flu. I think I'm getting it. What do I do? Okay. There is a new product that, that Premier Research Labs makes. That's the only products that I really sell. I sell a couple other ones from other companies, but only one or two from them. Everything, I sell everything from Premier, Premier Research Labs, Dr. Marshall's creation, because they are the best in the world. And on a later show, I'm going to go over that with you in terms of it is just hands down. No one comes even close to the amount of money and the science as well as just the good ethics and the energy that these people have done even way off into what, you know, you would be considered la-la land, but this is not. This is quantum physics, and these guys got it down. So they came up with a new product, which is called fermented mushrooms. Uh, fermented mushrooms is, this is, so these mushrooms have been shown to be highly stimulative. So when people do have viruses, what are the virus supplements you could take? These mushrooms, uh, in, in particular, um, the cordyceps. Cordyceps is uh, this weird mushroom that actually grows on, it's almost kind of like an animal, and uh, it grows on in insects and things like that. It gets, it's a, um, a spore that gets into, for instance, insects, and it grows inside their bodies. So it's one of these weird mushrooms, but what it does is it's a super immune modulating, stimulating type of thing. So fermented mushroom blend is, um, and these are fermented, which means they are in the raw state, but we use a fermentation process to break out and potentiate all of these things, which is supercharged. So normally you'd have to take a ton of mushrooms to get the same bang for your buck that you get in this. But we've got cordyceps, we've got reishi mushroom, we've got shiitake mushroom, maitake, turkey tails, that's another one um, that has been shown to be super immune modulating. Then it also has some green tea, ginger, and some cherry, um, which has got a little bit of vitamin C in it. 
So on the onset, so normally we take, say, a scoop of this and we could put this in our smoothies. But if you got an onset, I feel like I'm starting to get it. You can do like a half a can of this, which is up to three ounces all at once in some hot water. Or you can spread it out throughout the day, meaning maybe do an ounce of it um, uh, in some water. Um, that would be probably like three or four scoops of this in some hot water and drink it like a tea and do that like three times a day. Um, what that will do is this will nip it in the butt. I know when someone in personally that was on the road, a, a doctor who had this in his um, uh, packet, uh, he went on the road and, and he was on an airplane and he started to feel, oh, I've been here before, I could feel it coming on. And he just tried it, he just banged it, meaning he took as much as he thought he could, <laughs> almost a whole can, he took a half a can. And he said, I woke up the next day and it was boom, it was gone. And it was like, and he felt a million bucks um, not only did he not feel like, oh, I feel normal, he felt 100% double better, okay? So the fermented mushrooms on the onset of a cold or flu is exceptionally wonderful. On the onset, we can also take nucleotides. This is nucleotides are what the DNA is made out of. It acts in like a stand-in immune system, and it will nip it in the bud. We can also take what's called immunoven. Immunoven is another bunch of different herbs that stimulate um, and are very antiviral. And uh, basically, if you, you don't know what you got, but you start to feel, so the body aches, the, you know, the flu would be like a, say, the body aches, the, the shivering, the cold. You know, people start to feel it before and don't wait too long to, to get on it. Or don't wait too long to get home and get in bed and push the fluids and rest and things like that. Um, your body should be able, this will speed up your body's process to get over it, which is the fermented mushrooms, um, the nucleotides, and the immune event. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to get into another question here, which is uh, people talk about probiotics. What are probiotics? I'm going to blow your mind here, which is there's discoveries on what is called, there's families of probiotics. So probiotics is one of them. There are what's called prebiotics. There are probiotics. There are postbiotics, and now there's a discovery of what's called psychobiotics. And it, remember I told about the uh, autistic children? I'm going to answer this. So the products that we make, which is the, the Premier Research Labs, they make a fermented greens. Also, the fermented mushrooms does this as well. The fermented turmeric and the fermented beets. But I'm going to start with fermented greens, meaning... People said, I want to fix my probiotics. What they're really calling, which is science is calling the microbiome. And the microbiome is your gut ecology. It was characterized as what's called the second, second brain. It's actually the primary brain. You think in your gut. You feel it and your gut, uh, your intuition. But we see there's a, a, a brain neurologic process that happens in the gut first with your immune system and then and your your whole nervous system and then it goes up into the brain. So the gut is this fermenting container and all of these living life forms live inside there. They do our digestion for us and you can kind of think your stomach, you eat food, it goes into your stomach and then it goes into your small intestine and it snakes for miles and miles up and down and all around and inside and out, it's like a roller coaster. But all of these little bends is kind of like going down the Amazon. If you're in going down the Amazon, you'll come around one little corner and there's a whole different tribe that lives there. And you go up a, another mile ahead and that tribe may have never met the other tribe because they're an ecosystem and they live just there. And at this particular bend, they eat these particular types of fish because they only grow there and stuff like that. And they're good at this and blah, blah, blah. Well, this is a good metaphor for what our digestive system, which is our immune system, which is our brain. And they have to survive on these little living life forms, like the things that live in the soil. What we now know about the soil is, is it's the mycelial, it's the mushrooms, it's these living life forms that live in the soil that break the... Uh, nutrients down, in particular the minerals down, so that it becomes like a slurry, so that it becomes like a liquid, so that the root plants can suck it up. So it, it, the whole 
living structure of the ground as well as the ground of our gut. Our gut is a symbiotic, it is a negotiation. You are living with them and we need to live in harmony and we need to feed them. But what we've been doing is we've been killing them. And the foods, the American foods in particular, because they're so minerals and they're so high and a lot of, of uh, food additives and chemicals, they kill them and they sanitize them. And so it's no wonder that we get a lot of problems and in particular, a lot of, of mental or emotional problems. What we now know is the gut brain, the gut emotions, is, it precedes the brain. Uh, B vitamins in particular, so that's why over in Germany, uh, when a doctor, when you go into his office and you say, I'm, I'm depressed or I, I am having hallucinations or whatever, like they would here in America, they just put a person on a psychoactive type of thing. They're not allowed, not allowed to do that right away. They actually have to put you on a B vitamin first. And a lot of times it clears it up and you actually don't need the Prozac or this or that. Because what it's doing is just you are feeding these bacteria inside your gut the B vitamins because they produce the B vitamins. And so if they're dead or they're not really healthy, then they will not make enough of the B vitamins, which will now not go to your brain and will not go to your whole body. So if you put the B vitamins in there, not only does it go to your nervous system, your brain in particular, and calms you down and you can build serotonin and all this other stuff, but you start repairing the gut. You provide the B vitamins and you can repair the gut. So the fermented greens is what it provides is what's called prebiotics. So let's start with prebiotics. Prebiotics means pre, before, which is it's essentially the fertilizer before you even have the dirt. Then we have probiotics. Everybody knows about probiotics, but probiotics are like, for instance, lactobacillus and, and all of these things that you see that is in the yogurt commercials. These are all the things that live in there, the little living life forms that, that grow on there. So these are kind of the, the, you know, the uh, pioneers that live there. Then we have what's called postbiotics, and postbiotics is basically, it's the after products, after they are done with it, and the garbage that, for instance, let's say the villagers now produce in their village, their garbage, well, there's a bunch of other things that live on that garbage, right? And so like compost. So, and then we get into what's called psychobiotics. So uh, psychobiotics is, again, psycho, the, it's your brain, is um, basically it's, it's it's part of how your brain works. Okay, so the gut brain connection, we gut brain connection means mood stability. There's evidence to support a connection between the gut my, microbiome and brain function. Depression and anxiety can be reduced in a healthy gut. New research suggests that there is an interaction between the gut microbes and psychological state. Probiotics used for treatment of mood disorders such as depression and anxiety are referred to as psychobiotics. Based upon human clinical research, a strain of good bacteria called uh, Lactobacillus helveticus demonstrated improvements in mood, reduction of perceived stress, and promotion of relaxation, meaning not so freaked out all the time. There is an association between fermented foods and probiotics to improve various physical and mental disorders such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and osteoporosis. Mental illness can be linked to a structural, biochemical, and meta metabolic anomalies that influence mood and behavior. So now we're getting into the question of, I had a question about um, autism, the child. I have... Uh, um, and a couple of these questions. One is, is I've got a young child, and two, I've got, to, he's 23 years old, he ain't a child anymore, but he still lives at home, and um, uh, what goes with this whole autism thing, okay? What can I do with autism? Okay, first thing I would say that you would do with autism is his diet. Work on the diet. So the number one thing to eliminate out of autism uh, diet is MSG zero MSG. What is MSG? That is the Doritos. That is the things that are artificial flavors. So for instance, it's in all of those snack things. And you'll find a lot of autistic kids, which is the parents give it to them because they won't stop screaming unless you give them, but you're feeding them 
this stuff that is making it worse because if it has any what's called monosodium glutamate in it, that is a neurotransmitter. Basically, it tricks your tongue, it irritates the taste buds, and it turns on the taste receptors inside your brain. It irritates the test, taste receptors inside your brain so that things are tastier, sweeter, and saltier. Okay, but it is a trick. And when you have people that have some cognitive issues already, it's muddying up the waters and it's making things so much, so much worse. I know families that have taken their kids off of the, you know, the Doritos and the chips and all the other stuff. If you don't know, if it says natural flavors in it, that is a way for them to get around it and they don't have to say it, don't use it. Um, those uh, sauce, uh, like for instance, gravies, the bottled gravies, it's in there. Um, the things that like the broth that like the powder broth or the broth cubes, it's almost pure MSG. Do not cook with it. Do not let them eat it. Then I would also say apple cider vinegar, giving them as a capsule, or you can put it in water with a little bit of honey or something like that so they can drink it down. You'll oftentimes find times they like it just by itself. Okay. But apple cider vinegar, uh, Baby, probably uh, probably about two to four teaspoons to two to four tablespoons per day. Now, again, you can put it in. It, it's in a capsule form now so that they can swallow it with just a capsule. What it does is it sanitizes the gut. It uh, basically goes in and it will start to clean up these bad bacteria and other things and viruses and all kinds of other things that's living in the gut. Because a lot of times... Um, Anytime we're dealing with stuff with the brain, it is the gut, like I talked about before. Low carbohydrate diet. There's been a lot of evidence to show that a ketogenic diet, and you don't have to be 100% meat. You can still be plant-based or, or just a good, um, uh, you know, a good uh, reasonable omnivarian. You don't got to go crazy. You can do keto, which is ketogenic means you are feeding off of more fat and protein and low carbohydrates. Um, it's carbohydrates. Again, it's the sugar, it's the cakes, it's the cookies, it's the, you know, the cheese its it's all of these things. Those are straight carbohydrates, plus they have the bad chemicals in them. Um, uh, but also we get into, like, say, rice and potatoes and stuff like that, whereas the non-carbohydrate non vegetables is going to be any of the greens, like spinach, broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, um, uh, yellow squash, zucchini, um, What's the other one? Celery, um, cucumber, these types of things are very low carbohydrate. Uh, zero, almost zero carbohydrate. So they're not going to sim stimulate stuff like that. Then the other thing is put them on fermented, the fermented greens. Um, putting them on what's called uh, the microbiome, which is, this is a particular probiotic. I would put, I would flood them with probiotics which means I would give them the fermented foods. I would basically give them fermented mushrooms, the fermented greens. Uh, you can put this in a smoothie and they don't even know it. It tastes great. Um, I would also try to encourage them to eat more fermented foods. That is a natural sauerkraut. Those are natural pickles like um, uh, bubbies and other stuff like that. I'm going to get right back to that because I'm going to take a call. So let's go to the call. Hey, caller, how are you? Hello? Oh, hi there. You're you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, you're you're maybe you, we got the wrong connection. This is Jason. Yes, this is Jason. Yeah, this is the right show. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yes. Hi. So the question's on collagen powder. Um, no, collagen, so if we're getting sagging skin, there's two things. So one, it's a loss of collagen, and two, it is the uh, keratin. Um, but let's start, and then, uh, well, apple cider, or I'm sorry, 
Um, vitamin C, so if we want to produce our own collagen. So scurvy, back in the day when people would get this, this bleeding disease, which is if they didn't get enough vitamin C, they would bleed out. Well, it's because it's a loss of collagen. Because when we don't have enough vitamin C, we don't produce the collagen. And then there's cracks that are in between the cellular structures and we get a bleed out. So we can, by going on lots of vitamin C, now I recommend a the, the low sugar vitamin C's, um, the citrus. So again, if a person's healthy, how much vitamin C does a person need? About an orange a day or a lemon or an apple. If we're deficient in vitamin C, then probably the equivalent of like five apples so uh, or five oranges. So that's like taking, for instance, a vitamin C supplement. Now that helps to build collagen, but we're talking about actually taking a collagen that's already been made for you. Now, there's a lot of products, these, these powdered collagens that are out there. Some of them are, I don't like at all because they're not safe. I don't know where they come from. I don't know how they do it. Dr. Axe makes a good one. Um, now, that being... Yeah, Dr. Axe makes a good one. I've met Dr. Axe. He's great. And he and Jordan Rubin teamed up together. But let me tell you, you can make your own collagen. I prefer this. This is the best way to do it, which is you make your own bone broth. Because that's where they get the collagen from. This is They're just boiling down um, animal parts to get the collagen out of it. Here's how I make my own collagen. And it's actually, this is the most bioavailable form and it's, it's you know, and it's the cheapest way to do it, but it, it's the best way to do it. You go to your butcher and you get some good bones. You can get, say, for instance, uh, the beef bones. You can get like, so what you want to do is you're going to get the ones that have collagen on them. So that's going to be, let's say, the knees. That's going to be like even uh, the feet. That's going to be, let's say, even, um, oh, the tail. So where we like say like an oxtail, um, but you can just even femur bones and you can use chicken bones. You can use, you know, any of these types of things. So you go to a good grocery and you just, you know, you buy these bones. Um, the Asian markets that I go to, they'll sell them in big bags because that's what they make their faux broth out of. So what you do is you get a pasta pot, like a, the size, like you would make a big, you know, like a, a big, one of the biggest pots you got. Fill that up with the bones. Okay, and then what you do is you pour water into it so that the water covers it, so that it's basically bones are kind of submerged. And into that, you're going to then use some sea salt and you're gonna put like a handful, like a big mound of sea salt that fits in your whole hand that kind of makes like a mound. It's actually a lot of sea salt. That's okay because the sea salt breaks these bones down and pulls the nutrients out of it. Then you're also gonna to add to that about two, between one, to, depending on how sour you like it, between one to two cups of apple cider vinegar. Then you turn the pot on and you bring it up to, let's say, a low simmer boil. There's gonna be some froth that goes on the top. You skim that off and then you turn it on low and you let it sit there low, like on the back burner for three days. So whether you have a gas burner or a, um, an electric burner, some people do this in a crock pot. Um, you when you put it on low, you really want it to just be 130 degrees or or more, but uh, you don't want it on a rolling boil. Just a couple bubbles every once in a while, and you just let it go. Then after it's that three days is done, then what you do is you let it cool down and you strain it out and basically throw the bones away and keep the liquid and put them in let's say mason jars or you can put them in these, these you know, freeze safe containers and you can put some in the freezer because you'll make a lot of it. And uh, so you can freeze it and then some in the refrigerator. So how do we know bone broth is the right type of bone broth? Because you see a lot of bone broths that you can buy out there and they're quite expensive. If at room temperature or, or cold, like for, say in the refrigerator, if it's not a gelatin, it should not be a liquid. It should be literally like hard jello and it only turns into a liquid after you've heated it up. So that's a good bone broth. So how do you use it? You take a couple scoops out of it and you heat it up in, you know, on your stove or in the microwave and you're making like a cup of broth and, and it will liquefy and you can drink it down. You can add some spices into it afterwards, but just as a straight bone broth, this, cause see when it's gelatinous like that or when it's like that jello type of thing, that means that's all collagen. 
Now, how do they make the collagen powder? They then take that stuff and they dehydrate it, which is they high heat it and they air dry it and stuff like that. So there's some processes that are done to it that, uh, you know, I trust Dr. X, but you can make it better by doing it yourself. And by consuming the bone broth, what it will do is it, yes, it will get to your skin, but the most important thing is it gets to your guts. It gets to your elementary canal and it helps to repair the gut ecology which we were talking about before, which will then leach into your skin. A lot of people want to put the topical stuff and fix the skin. You have to fix it from the inside out. And so by enough vitamin C and added collagen, you'll get there and you'll start to see the skin elasticity and it will start to plump up. But see, if people are not doing the vitamin C and just doing, let's say, the collagen, they're not going to get there fast enough. They're not going to produce their own. So I recommend doing both of them. Okay, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when I do my, I've been doing this for years. So when I do this bone broth this way, now the vinegar has to be that high. When you take the bones out, even the big femur, they crumble in your hand. They literally turn into like chalk because all of the minerals, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And maybe not enough bones. You really got to, you know, like, the, again, well, that should do it. Yeah. Yeah, that should do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it tastes good, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's why I like 72 hours because it really just extracts. And it, and again, it's, you're only about 130 degrees, uh, which is enough to keep any kind of bad things growing. But it's enough to just, it's low and slow and it just leaches all of the stuff out of the bones. Especially all of the collagen that's inside of, like, say, the joints and stuff like that. Um, it, yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. A good trick for that one, for those those bones, for instance, a good trick for the beef bones is what you do is you roast them first. So um, that makes it even taste even better. Some people that don't like the taste, what you do, like for instance, the femur bones or the marrow bones, what you do is you put them in the oven at like, say, 450 degrees, and you roast them for maybe about 30 minutes which they will get just like nice and brown. They'll get a great smell and then you throw them in the water. And then now you get this great beefy, great flavor. But I like, for instance, like I said, the, the, the oxtail and stuff like that because it's all this collagen stuff. The marrow bones, there's some, but there's not a whole lot of collagen there. Um, so it's, oh geez, you can get oxtail. Again, I like to, the Asian market that I like to go to is in, I think Madison Heights, that's 14 and John R. Uh, it's called uh, Asian Mart 186 or 168. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're only using American made stuff. This is their, you know, and they're, they go through so many uh, bones and stuff every day that, yeah, I do trust them. Yep. 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 I trust them. And, uh, you know, again, you need what's in it more so than what could even be in there. But again, they go through such high levels of, of that stuff that it, it, number one, doesn't sit around too long. And number two, they get a good source of that. So um, especially the Asians, the Asians are not are not stupid. They, they you know, there is a lot of toxicity in, in, in China, but there's, the, you know, especially the Asians over here. No, they're, they're pretty healthy and they, they know the difference. So, okay. Yeah, in that shopping center. 
Yep, and there's a lot of Asian markets all over the place. The other place I like to go to is um, right here. There's the uh, uh, Carnival Market. That's a Mexican market. So sometimes going to the Mexican markets too, they will have soup bones. They'll have bags of these soup bones. So the Mexican market here in, in it's, it's like Pontiac and in, in Auburn Hills, Carnival Market. Um, they'll have bags of all of these different types of bones and uh, they're spectacular. So a lot of places to get bones. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Thanks for the question. And uh, let's go back into, let's see, I was talking about, um, I did the fermented greens. Well, let's move on to this next one. Um, oh, okay. So this one goes into this two. I have another, uh, a, a mother that called about her son doing the five hour energy drinks or the monster or the Red Bull. Um, I just watched a video where this guy, this was on, um, I think it was, uh, not YouTube, but it was um, Facebook, but it was this guy that did all these experiments with the energy drinks, and he poured it on, let's say, a piece of bread with, like, say, some baking powder or something like that, and the, it was a big loaf of bread, and the whole thing rolled up. He poured it on a hammer, and then the hammer, like, it, it, it did chemical things to... Uh, materials that like you don't want that in your body at all there's a lot of damage and a lot of people that have to do the five hour energy drink and the monster this type of thing they rock their teeth out um it totally puts them on um it burns their adrenals out you're taking these young guys that are in their 20s um that you know in three to five years they their bones look like they're 60 70 years old it's very damaging Okay, so what could we do instead of the five-hour energy drink? Premier Research Labs makes this Max Stress B. Max Stress B is the B vitamins, B12, B6, B3, the, all of the B vitamins, but they are in what's called their N-chain form, meaning the B vitamins that they put in these energy drinks, they are the cheapest, they are the junkiest, the ones that are the sugar-free are the worst because they have so many chemicals in them to make them taste sweet. Oh my goodness, they are so, so bad for you. And uh, people get addicted to these things and they can be very, very harmful. And then people also do coffee a lot too. People do, you know, uh, the caffeine and they burn out the adrenal glands. So doing like two teaspoons of this Max Stress B. I know truckers who use this and they're like, this is way better than this other stuff because it builds up your body's system of what it needs, um, uh, but uh, these natural forms. So two teaspoons of the Max Dress B uh, will replace the Monster Drink, the Red Bull, and they'll love the way that it feels. They will get the energy and it will help them to wean off of this stuff, okay? Uh, the number to call in is 313-272-5600. Uh, let me go. Okay, I've got another question, which is I've had a person, I, this over the years, I've had many, because I talk about if you want optimum digestion, meaning you want to break your foods down and you don't want anything that would infect you so people get food, um, what breaks this down as well as sanitizes your food is the hydrochloric acid in your food, Okay. Um, this also goes to another question. This tag teams on this other question, which is how do you hit get heartburn? What solutions do you recommend? These are related, which is people taking hydrochloric acid. So if, if you if you went to medical school or if you remember biology class, biology 101 is we eat food. Food goes in, the salivary glands start to secrete some enzymes, which that starts to break it down. Your teeth then breaks it down, big chunks into the little chunks, and then chunk, chunk, it goes into your stomach. Well, your stomach secretes hydrochloric acid, which then starts to break down. Now you get people, I remember when I was a kid, like, <laughs> as, as a boy, you know, I'm a boy and had all of these, like, uh, you know, used to play all different types of things. And, you know, the, the TV shows that you saw of putting somebody into hydrochloric acid, like you know, 007 and, ah, like piranhas, and it ate him up. Or putting, you know, if you pour hydrochloric acid on a nail, that's going to eat a nail, right? Oh, yeah. That's so, this fear of hydrochloric acid is built into our system. But see, our body secretes the hydrochloric acid, and our stomach is made 
to handle the hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid that we take as the HCl pill form, it's not foreign. It's what's called trimethylglycine. It's the same exact type that your body secretes and handles. So you're made for it. So people that say, I'm afraid of this HCl. I even had a, a person in medical school uh, that said, what? You're crazy. Taking hydrochloric acid, you're going to burn a hole in your stomach. No, you're not. Uh, unless you have what's called H. pylori, which is a person that has, let's say, a um, an ulcer, a bleeding ulcer is because they've lost the internal lining and their acid is eating away at the stomach. That's a different thing. We're not talking about that. Those people should not be taking the hydrochloric acid. And what's now known is how did you get the... Um, uh, the ulcer, it's from a bacteria called H. pylori, Heliobacter pylori, which is, they put you in an antibiotic. So it's a bug that's eating your stomach cells and actually turning off the ability to produce your own basic wax lining to keep you from burning. So when they um, get rid of, now how do we get this bacteria? Because we had, you know, which came first, chicken or the egg? So Heliobacter, or for instance, that bacteria got into our system because we had low hydrochloric acid in the first place. And people, when they have heartburn, what's happening is, is you're bubbling acid up. And so they put you in acid reducers. But see, the acid that you're bubbling up is lactic acid. It's not hydrochloric acid. Lactic acid is a byproduct of the fermentation. It's rotting food. So without enough hydrochloric acid, the food starts to rot, which then turns into lactic acid, and that bubbles up into your throat, okay? So the answer is not to put you in an anti-acid. The answer is to actually raise the hydrochloric acid. That's why many people, when they have heartburn, if you take some apple cider vinegar and water, they go, wow, that's an acid. It makes it feel better. It gives you relief, but it doesn't digest the food. So taking the hydrochloric acid in a pill form, which it does, goes into the system, and then it, it digests the food as if you had perfect digestion, as if you were younger again. So the answer to get the hydrochloric acid, or I'm sorry, the heartburn to go down is to take more of the hydrochloric acid. Then you will not ferment the food, and then it doesn't bubble up into this gas. So that is the long-term you know, roundabout about how do we fix this, okay? Now, hydrochloric acid, low hydrochloric acid has been shown to have a main, be a main contributor to osteoporosis, low bones, weak muscles, muscle loss, all of the things that we would call old age, wasting and inability to digest protein, meaning you get the old people who they put them on unsure because they don't eat enough protein and they don't, well, the reason is because they don't have the hydrochloric acid to break the protein down. So if we raise the hydrochloric acid up to where it's supposed to be, now we can digest the protein and then even pull the minerals out, that, like the calcium and stuff like that, that needs to be digested by an acid in order for it to then be uh, absorbed by your digestive system. So the real true anti-aging is digestion, proper digestion. If you want to nip aging in the bud and reverse aging, you can reverse aging. It's the hydrochloric acid, and it's safe. Uh, if it burns a little bit, you drink a little bit extra water. If it still burns after that, then we're going to have to do the stomach tea, and then we have to do the mud packs to repair it. Or, for instance, even get diagnosed by your doctor of the H. pylori, and they put you on that right, correct antibiotic. I've seen that work too, okay? But there are answers to this. You want to not just get rid of the ulcer. You want to fix the body so that you can have the hydrochloric acid be tolerable and then when it's tolerable when you, now when I take hydrochloric acid with my food it feels good I get this nice warm feeling and um, it really you can tell you're digesting your food but it makes me feel comfortable most people say that when the stomach can handle it and in their in the right situation they get the right dosage of the hydrochloric acid they go oh my stomach feels good again when I eat I don't feel bloated or I don't feel distension or I don't feel discomfort in the belly. It's actually a nice warm glow <laughs> and it really feels great in your body. Okay, 
The, the number to call in, we're getting to the home stretch here, about 10 minutes left. The number to call in is just 313-272-5600. Live is Facebook Live, my strategic healing page. And later, it's archived on my YouTube channel, which is Jason Eagle QRA. Um, okay, now we get another one, which is I've had people talk about um, the brain. And I brought this product up before. There's a lot of things that we can do for the brain, but... One of the biggest things that we have, uh, we've noticed in terms of exciting new research dis, uh, demonstrates that the ingredients of uh, anything that produces what's called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factors, anything that increases BDNF, um, which is aging and neurodegeneration has been shown to be low levels of the BDNF. So if you can increase levels of BDNF, there's a bunch of other things, but this is one of the biggest things that we're seeing of um, how do you fix the brain, okay? Now, one, brain is made out of fat. So we have to have high levels of fat and we have to be able to digest the fat. It's the gallbladder that does that. So the first thing, if you got an older person that's starting to have some loss of memory or if you're even middle age and you're going, I'm, remember these numbers and stuff like that I really want to bruise my brain and I want to make sure I don't have this problem because it's in my family I don't want this problem you start working on the fat metabolism so if we like most Americans you don't have very good fat metabolism your gallbladder doesn't work very well you take lemonine it's this orange oil and you put it in some water and everything that you eat with some with some fat in it. Now it makes sure that it goes into the system. So now my brain, we able to get the fat, which is the avocados and the nuts and all this other stuff. You eat them, does it get there? Okay. Now, on top of that, is there some specific supplements that can produce this stuff? Yes. So one of them is this Cognitrophic, which it has what's called Numentix, which is a actually spearmint. And spearmint provides these new polyphenols that have been shown to improve cognitive performance. One is called rosmeric acid, salveolic acid, cafeteric acid, and lithospermic acid. Uh, these are these different, again, essential fatty acids. So fat is an acid, okay? It's these type of essential polyphenols and the essential fats that, that the plug into the fats, it helps to rebuild the brain. Okay, so this Cognitrophic has the, I've talked about this before, which is the coffee fruit, the whole fruit, which is when they pick coffee, it's these red beans, and they look like a red fruit, they look like uh, cranberries, okay? And when they process to make coffee that we drink, what they do is they it, it, inside that red bean there are two little green beans because uh, coffee is what's called a dicot or dicotyledon which is it's two and those are the green coffee beans they take those out they throw away the red husk that's on the outside and um which is called this cascara um and then they roast the beans and that's where we get the black bean coffee okay but coffee fruit is the whole coffee bean with this red part in it. And it's been shown to, when people consume this, it's not like the caffeine. There is some caffeine, but it's it has the anti-caffeine. So it doesn't, it, it's balanced. It's the whole fruit. And it's been shown to um, support this, what's called BDNF. It actually rebuilds it, okay? Um, now, we get into another thing. Are there some things that also produce BDNF? Yes, are there some behaviors? What else can I do to increase BDNF? So those old people, you put them on this stuff, but you also exercise. Now, that doesn't mean they have to be up and jumping around. You can do chair exercises, movement, any type of exercise. Exercise, so, and the more exercise that they can do, 20 minutes of walking, um, you know, these different types of things, the more that they're capable of doing, uh, the better, okay? Exercise. Number two, avoid junk foods, avoiding sugar, processed food, and high fructose corn syrup. If you can avoid those things, you will produce, because those things are turning off the BDNF. They are sucking it out. They're destroying your brain. Deep sleep. 
uh, get at least five continuous hours of sleep every night, right? Um, if we have to get up and go pee, we have to solve that. Uh, a lot of times people, um, you stop drinking at least three hours before you go to bed. And, uh, and then maybe you can stay in bed and not have to get up and go pee. Four, meditation. De-stress with relaxing meditation techniques. This will help to reproduce and build BDNF. Five, sunlight. Get at least 20 minutes of natural sunlight. Okay, it's winter time. We can't do that, but you can sit by an open window. You can sit by a window during the daytime and light is coming through there. And so you can actually get that light therapy on the inside or do this vacation <laughs> and, and go somewhere where there's some, some sunshine. Number six, be happy. Choose an attitude. Choose to adopt a positive, happy attitude because the stress robs our brain of this BDNF and we can rebuild it by putting these nutrients in. But emotion, attitude is a nutrient. It is a, it just like bad attitude is a poison. It's a poison to your life. And so we can actually reverse it and, uh, and rebuild the brain. And uh, so these are great techniques to do this type of stuff. Uh, I'm Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. If you've got questions, I've got so many answers to these things. And these are not answers, things uh, that I just researched. These are things that I've been doing in myself, as in my practice for 25 years. And I have empirical evidence. And I have, you can go to my website and you can see all of the different um, testimonials of people that said, this helped me, this, and I dealt with this for these many years, and I went to these many doctors, and they couldn't help me, but Jason helped me, and then helped me to learn how to treat myself naturally. This is the whole, it's all about being natural, because natural has the answers, and we need to start getting off of the unnatural things, uh, the drugs and things like that, because they, they do a great purpose, but they're really only meant to be temporary. They are basically a placeholder until you can pick up the mantle and do it yourself. Um, and so if you want to learn natural ways of healing, natural ways, and, and even how your body is supposed to be, uh, the way that we were designed, and we were designed to digest food and eat food and handle these different types of things. And we were designed to be happy. Okay, people can go through different circumstances and how could I be happy with this? I can show you a ton of people who've had horrible circumstances, come from war-torn areas and they got a big smile on their face and they've even had family members die right in front of them. Really horrible things, but they're happy because they choose to be happy as well as they can find reasons like I'm alive and uh, I ate today and I've got a business and I've got family and I've got, I've got hope and, and, and I'm here and I choose to be happy. Even if today's I'm sick and I don't feel well, I choose to be happy and I choose to think on the good things. I choose to focus on the good times. Pick a memory, especially a childhood memory of when you felt good and when things were good and go into that memory. What did it smell like? What did it look like? What were the sounds? I heard the crickets, I heard the dogs, or you know, what did it, what was the temperature? The more you relive this thing, use it as a touchstone and find a place in the and ones where we were children are very, very strong. Where were the smells? I smelled flowers, I smelled cinnamon. It was, it was these people, these types of things. Focus on these things and rebuild your emotional health. And your whole body will then, so we can rebuild this. I'm in the last 30 seconds here on the home stretch. So this is Jason Eagle. I will see you next week. And uh, the number to call, 313-272-5600. Make a note of it, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.